Hi everyone, it's Miss Mitchell here. I'm coming to you today from the yoga mat in my living room, doing a couple of workouts today with my mom, uh, virtually of course. Um, but I hope that you guys are doing things at home to stay well and stay healthy and that you're staying strong and getting in uh, good exercises for your lungs, your heart, your mind, your body, your soul, all of that good stuff. So I hope that you're doing well and staying healthy. I think I'm actually going to turn this way because the lighting will be better. All right. So there we go. Today we are back with Encyclopedia Brown, the, boy, the world's uh, most favorite boy detective. And today we have the case of the knife in the watermelon. What could be up with that? All right. Let's try to think like a detective today, think like Encyclopedia Brown, and see if we can figure out how he figures out this case. Are you ready to think? Let's go. Mr. Patch was the first grown up to come to the Brown Detective Agency. He was carrying a watermelon. Mr. Patch owned a grocery store. He showed the watermelon to Encyclopedia. It had a knife buried in it up to the handle. Find the boy who owns this knife, roared Mr. Patch. Look what he did. Encyclopedia looked at the watermelon. Stabbing a watermelon isn't against the law, he pointed out. I mean, it's not the same as stabbing a person. The knife ended in my watermelon, Mr. Patch shouted. It started in the window of my storeroom. Someone used the knife to break into your storeroom? And to open my money box, cried Mr. Patch. How much was stolen? asked Encyclopedia. The thief didn't have time to take anything, said Mr. Patch in a calmer voice. He heard me coming and he got scared. When he started to run, he tripped and fell. His knife plunged into this watermelon. He didn't have time to pull it out. Did you see his face? Mr. Patch shook his head. No, but I did see he had the letter L on the back of his jacket. That means he's a lion, a member of the boys club on Woodburn Avenue, said Encyclopedia, a real lead. If you remember who was part of the Tigers or the Lions Club, I think it was the, was it the, no, that was the Tigers. I'm thinking of different things. Never mind. The private detective stepped closer to the watermelon. The knife had plunged into it so deeply that only the carved wood handle showed above the green skin. Mr. Patch laid a quarter on the gasoline can. Find the owner of this knife and quick. I'm sorry, replied Encyclopedia, thinking he would have to charge for expenses on this case. I'll need a little time. I have to buy a fingerprint kit. Then I'll have to dust the handle of the knife and... There are no fingerprints, said Mr. Patch heavily. I wiped them off. You, you wiped them off, said Encyclopedia weakly. Mr. Patch explained. My cat knocked a bag of flour off a shelf. It broke and spilled over the watermelon and knife. I wiped off the floor. And the fingerprints too? Encyclopedia clasped his head and moaned. <sighs> then he looked up. Still, the thief doesn't know that you wiped off his fingerprints. Encyclopedia took out his handkerchief. He wrapped it carefully around the handle of the knife. That does it, he said. That makes it look as though we have fingerprints that we are trying to save. The thief may try to wipe them off and give himself away. We'll have to watch all the lions. Let's go. Encyclopedia got into Mr. Patch's truck. They drove over to Woodburn Avenue. Four lions, John, Frank, Corky, and Buster, were outside the club working on the engine of an old black car. Although few in number, the lions were all big boys, bigger than Bugs Meany. That's who I was thinking of earlier. But Mr. Patch was bigger than any of them. He had strong hands and big arms, so the lions listened when Encyclopedia spoke. Do you see this watermelon? He asked. Now I take off the handkerchief. There, what do you see? The handle, said Buster. Of a knife, said Corky. Very interesting, said John. So what, said Frank. And there's Encyclopedia Brown with the knife in the watermelon. 
The knife, said Encyclopedia, was used in an attempt to rob Mr. Rob Mr. Patch's store. The knife, said Buster, doesn't belong, said Corky. To any, said John. Of us, said Frank. Maybe not, but the police will probably take your fingerprints, said Encyclopedia. If the guilty boy steps forward now, Mr. Patch will ask the police not to be too hard on him. The lions looked serious. Mr. Patch looked serious. The only boy detective in the state looked serious. But that was all. It's not working the way you planned, said Mr. Patch in a whisper. None of them has tried to wipe the handle off of the knife. Encyclopedia nodded. Leave the knife in the watermelon, just as it is. Don't touch it, he whispered back. To the lions, he said, the police will break you up your club if they find out that one of you has a knife. The lions stopped looking serious. They looked scared. Suddenly, John said softly, Frank owns a knife like that. A lot of fellows own knives with the carved handles, retorted Frank. Cut it out. You showed me yours yesterday. John shout back. You even tried to get me to hold it. Why, my fingerprints might be on that handle. It's not the same knife, said Frank, so quit worrying. I lost my knife last month, Buster said. Everyone knows I did. Where is your knife, Corky? I lost mine too, said Corky. This one couldn't be my knife anyway. Mine has a blade a half inch longer. None of the lions remembered what the other knives looked like. They began to argue loudly. Each boy tried to put himself in the clear. Too bad, muttered Mr. Patch. They are scared and fighting among themselves, but none of them has touched the knife to try to get rid of the fingerprints. Your plan didn't work. Yes, it did, said Encyclopedia. I know whose knife it is. How did he figure it out? How did he know whose knife it was? Did you guys figure it out? In that conversation that they were having, somehow Encyclopedia already knows whose knife it was. Hmm, any ideas? Talk about it with a friend, a sibling, a parent, a cat, a dog, whatever you got, a tree. Talk to somebody, see if you can figure it out. I'll give you a few seconds here to think about it. Do, 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 do. So, did you figure it out? Did you figure out, first of all, whose knife it was? Or how Encyclopedia figured it out? Let's think about it. Here we go. Here's the solution to the case of the knife in the watermelon. As Mr. Patch said, none of the lions touched the knife. So the blade was buried in the watermelon all the time the lions were looking at it. In other words, none of the lions could see how long the blade of the knife was. But Corky said his knife had a blade that was a half inch longer, in his words, than the one in the watermelon. That was his mistake. He could not have known how long the blade was unless he had seen it before. The knife belonged to Corky. So to break it down for you, Corky said, hey, that can't be mine. My blade is a half inch longer than that. How did he know how long the blade was? You can't see it when it's still in the watermelon, right? Well, I hope you used your brain today to figure that one out. You were able to put the pieces together and did some thinking. Tomorrow, we will be back with our next case, which will be the case of the missing roller skates. Mm, I haven't gone roller skating in a while. That sounds like that could be fun or awful. I have bad balance. But tomorrow, back with the case of uh, the missing roller skates. I will see you guys tomorrow. Have a great rest of your day. Goodbye.